people show up and and let's say they're criticizing different parts of us if it hurts if we're taking it personally that just means we have some inner work to do that's a place inside of you that's calling for your love and attention Welcome back to another episode on Find Joy with Joyan, the podcast that is all about helping you live and lead a life with joy. I'm your host, Joyan Chan, and every Wednesday, we are giving you access to the world's best and brightest minds in their fields on our show. Listen in as these leaders impart their wisdom, inspiration, and stories to empower you to live joyfully with intention, passion, and purpose and celebrate the struggles and overcome the challenges we may face each day with the tools and insights that we are going to share with you. Whether you are looking to improve your relationship, find your passion, learn how to embrace the present moment, deepen your spiritual connection, or learn the magic of manifestation and law of attraction to attract more abundance, this podcast is here to guide you every step of the way. As your host, I am also challenging myself to dig deeper to learn and unlearn and ride along with you. We are not here to tell you how to live your life because it is your life. But this life is all that we have right now. So my friend, why not live our life to the fullest? So I hope these conversations and stories will guide and inspire you to live your life to your highest potential and a life that you are proud of as you continue to grow and evolve in your own journey. So if you are ready to start living a more passionate, purposeful and joyful life, join us every Wednesday on Find Joy with Joanne for inspirational stories, powerful message, fun conversations and empowering talks with me and my special guests and friends. And now without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Joining us today is a dynamic certified life coach who has spent years empowering individuals to transform their life, shed emotional baggage, and embrace their authentic self. Her unique energy and personalized coaching methodology have touched thousands of lives globally on and off stage. She has devoted significant time to self-discovery and unpacking her own emotional baggage, enabling her to navigate relationships more effectively. Her coaching methods marry professional certifications with wisdom from her own 16-year marriage that came to a close. Hence, she believes that some of her most powerful insights on relationship come from understanding what doesn't work and she uses these insights alongside her extensive life coaching experience to guide others on their relationship journeys. So whether you are in a relationship seeking to reignite the spark or you are looking to attract your ideal relationship, her teachings and tools are sure to generate real lasting change in your most important relationship. And she's here today to empower you to revitalize your connections and turn your relationship around with life reimagined. So guys, help me in welcoming the founder and creator of Inner World Movement, the loving heart, Dana Parker. This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, you will know that I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your headache life. They also have an educational course on the Law of Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up to get $25 off. Hi Dana, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to meet you finally. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to talk more. Yeah, you know, I'm always curious about this topic, about, you know, this topic of relationship because that's not what I'm good at <laughs> and um, so what I want to know about a bit about your background and your personal journey what brought you to be doing the work that you're doing today and also created the the program Life Reimagined yeah so I have a background in life coaching I have several different certifications I'm really passionate about learning I love learning I've always been fascinated with learning and in particular uh, around emotional intelligence 
I began at 23 years old. I had two little boys and, and I had a lot of heavy past experiences that I had been carrying, you know, past trauma from my childhood and things like that, that, that I'd been carrying and I didn't know what to do with it. Just like so many people. And so, uh, and I, I recognized that it was starting to affect my relationship with my children, with my husband at the time. And so I started to really dive into an uh, understanding the subconscious mind, how it works and how to start letting go of some of this baggage and the, these old stories that I carried from my childhood. And so, uh, I spent the last, now we're going on, uh, 14 years really diving into different topics. I, I got into uh, hypnosis. I, I'm really passionate about that, really training your brain for what you want. And uh, I got certified as a life coach in several different organizations. I taught for three different companies and now just started my own thing. So because I, I, I'm so passionate about um, emotional intelligence and being a uh, our world really deserves to have more understanding around um, managing our emotions and what it looks like to have accountability for your own emotions and for your own baggage and your own stuff. Because all too often I find, you know, we, we have this out of balance. You're either too accountable or under accountable or you blame. And so, um, and, and I can fall into that trap still. It's still a practice for me to remind myself and so um, a few years ago, probably we're going on four years, I went through the process of divorce. And, you know, I had spent most of my career learning how to manage and process emotions. And it profoundly affected uh, my process through the divorce because that is, it is such a, a highly emotional process and it's very complex. And so as I navigated that, those tools, I really pulled on those tools. I really leaned into those tools and they, they really made a difference for me in coming out from that divorce, more grounded, more centered, um, more healthy and, and therefore attracting what I wanted. You know, I'm in a beautiful relationship now with somebody that I love that meets what I want. And so I really, you know, as I'm getting into this place where I'm like, I am loving this life. Now I'm like, what, well, how can I help everyone else? You know, I'm really passionate and, and it brings my heart so much joy to help people, um, you know, kind of bring into a system what it looks like to move through that process in healthy ways. Right. Well, I love that. And I have so many questions. You know, you talk about, you are so passionate about emotional intelligence and you know, it's all about how do we manage our own emotions. And you also talk about you have discovered some of the tools that you personally, you know, um, implemented in the process of getting a divorce and attracting your ideal partner, your ideal relationship. Um, so what are some of the tools that you have discovered that you could share with us? Um, perhaps someone, you know, who is going through some challenges and so that they are listening to this right now, they know what are the tools or resources or help or support they need in order to, you know, really like overcome this hurdle? Yeah. So I, I break it down into these simple, uh, simple categories and, and we're simultaneously working through these, but I have a system that I've created that kind of brings people, it brings people through this process. First, you have to learn how to release, release the past. And this goes for if you're going through divorce, but also if you're in a relationship, in a relationship, you know, anytime we're in those, they can start accumulating baggage and hard experiences and conflict that's unresolved, right? And we just start building this baggage. And so learning the process of releasing that, what does that look like? And how do you do that? It really is a, is a process that I break down into steps of looking at the facts versus your feelings. It's important to bring that man that that balanced perspective to the story because we all when we have those emotional experiences especially through divorce or high conflict in a relationship we have our set story in our mind of how we see that how it happened and what it means and we define it and so when we can kind of separate out 
the facts, what actually happened, and then our feelings, how we felt about it, because those both matter. And then you can kind of see, okay, this is what happened, and this is the meaning I'm making of it. Those two categories are really profoundly important because the facts of what happened don't always really match up the reality of the meaning we're making of it. So I'll give you, can I give you an example? Yeah, I was about to ask that though. Yeah, yeah. Let's take, let's take a, a typical woman that has this core identity belief that she's not beautiful, that she's ugly, right? She, she brought that on through her childhood. She believes she's ugly. And so she has this belief, she gets married and, you know, she, she's doing the, the mom thing and the life thing. And her husband comes home and is like, wow, you look beautiful today. And she's like, no, I don't. I, I didn't even really get ready. What are you talking about? And she rejects that because it doesn't match her story about herself. And let's take the same woman the same, same woman and man. And this time she spent all day getting ready. It's a big anniversary date and she's dressed to the nines and her husband's late and comes home and is like, I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm late. I'm going to run upstairs. I'm going to shower. And where do you want to go for dinner as he's running off? And she, he doesn't even notice. Yeah. And in that moment, the facts of what happened is he, he was late he was feeling stressed and he was running to get ready to go. That's the facts. The feelings, though, are profoundly different. And, and these are just small little things that we do all the time. Those feelings, if she has that core belief that she's not that she's not beautiful, that she's ugly, in that moment, she could take that and be like, he didn't even notice me. I must not look good enough today. I must not look beautiful enough. And, and we constantly do this in our most intimate relationships where we have the facts of what happened, but the feelings and what the meaning we make of it don't always match. Now, in either situation, did it really have anything to do with her husband's opinion of her? No, it had to do with her of her own opinion of herself. Right. And so that's the work. That's the work that, that I really value and really bring people through that process of going through their, their marriage. And what are those big stories? You know, what are the big stories that led up to that divorce? And, and can we separate the facts from the feelings? And then I have two other simple steps called find insight and future. Find insight and future. You know, everything, once you work through the facts and the feelings and you can kind of see where you made, you made meaning of things that maybe weren't actually there, then you can start finding insight. What did I learn from that? What did I learn about myself? What did I learn about relationships? What did I learn about what I value? You know, and then you start, you start gleaning the lessons from that relationship, from that, that conflict or that divorce. And that's where the gold is. And oftentimes people don't get there themselves. They don't get to that place because they don't have that process. And so then in, with future, it's like, now what do you want? What do you want to create now? Now that you've had this big conflict, you've worked through the, the facts, the feelings, the insight that you found, what you learned, what do you want in the future? How do you want this to look? How do you want it to go? And then work towards that. And now you actually have room because you've worked through the motions. You've worked through sorting through the facts and the feelings. You have found the insight of what you learned and you learn more about yourself and about your partner and about your relationship and what you want um, or your future relationships of what you want, right? Because oftentimes we can look at our past relationships and, and know, you can know lots about yourself from that if you can go through these simple steps. And so that's the process that I really like to take people through in releasing, releasing those old things. And it's simple, but it's not always easy. Having, you know, someone to guide you through that and ask you questions and help you through that. It, it's really powerful. It's profound. And I've been really grateful for my coaches and mentors that they've, they've walked me through those same, same processes, right? Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for guiding us through the tree process. Um, 
And so I want to go back to the scenario when you talk about the, the woman who, you know, got dressed, you know, look beautiful, but the husband just didn't notice her. In that moment, if someone is, let's say she's working with you, right, in this program or, you know, working with you as a coach, in, this, in that moment, what would she be thinking about? If she is kind of like aware of her own little story, what would be, you know, what would be the difference? Yeah. So the difference really is in those moments when you start to recognize, oh, these are my own stories that I'm making up. I'm actually projecting that my husband doesn't think I'm beautiful, but it's really me. Mm. And so that's when we start working together to really build from the inside. And this goes to my next step and in the process of rebuilding yourself. After a divorce, it is, it's vital that you rebuild yourself. And even after conflict, you got to rebuild what you value, who you are, you know, relationships bring out new parts of ourselves. And so in those moments for her, what I'd be saying is it's important that you reaffirm your belief, your idea of what you want to believe about you. And it's really important that you start receiving compliments, receiving those, those moments where your husband really reaffirms what you want to believe about you, it's time to start receiving that, Mm. to really let that in through that filter. Don't reject that. Say, thank you. You know, it's like the hand gesture and the thank you actually is telling your body, body, we're receiving, right? Thank you. I received that. And, and this is a practice I've even started my own self and practice for several years and it makes a profound difference. And, and, you know, being a words of affirmation, I love words of affirmation. It's my love language. I get to be really aware of not needing people's compliments, but asking myself when someone compliments me, like, Ooh, do I want to believe that about me? Cause I get to choose, right? Ooh, thank you for that compliment. Yeah. I like that. I want to believe that about me. Thank you. I received that. Right. So it's the practice of reframing in your mind what you want to believe about you, rebuilding yourself, knowing who you are and receiving. There's a lot of R's, right? (laughs) A lot of R's. Yeah. Okay. Talk to me about seeking validation because I feel like there's many, many people, especially women, um, when we are in a relationship, we are constantly seeking validation Mm -hmm. from our partner, you know, and you know, it's, we, receiving is one thing, but like we are seeking, you know, their affection, their love, their attention. Mm-hmm. And what is the difference between, again, between seeking validation and receiving compliments, but not needing it, not like trying hard to get it, you know? Right, right. I think one is a, it's a neediness. It's a performing. I'm going to perform and be exactly what you want me to be so that I can, I can get your words. I right. definitely did that in my life. I, I performed. That is something I did all growing up. And, you know, talking to my parents, it's like, yeah, Dana was the perfect child. And I was like, yeah, that's how I earned love, you know? And I had to break that. I had to learn how to be, to to really go within to me and and really remind myself that everyone else's compliments are just additions to what I reaffirm to myself regularly, what I say to myself regularly. And so there's a difference between like needing it. It's, it's, I need other people to tell me that I'm good versus I believe that I am good. I believe that I reaffirm that I gather proof to that because oftentimes what's fascinating is, is our deepest ideas, for example, the most common core negative belief that I hear, and this is, I've worked with people all over the world. I've worked with people in, in Africa, in Switzerland, in China, everywhere. And everyone has these core beliefs, negative beliefs about themselves. The co- most common is I'm not enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And right now, if I were to ask anyone who struggles with that, let's make a list of all the things that you do in your life, all the ways that you are enough. We can make a long list and all the ways that you believe you're not enough. We could probably make a list too for those, especially people who, who focus on maybe more the negative parts of themselves. They can make a long list there too. So if both are there, then what, what's, what's present choice. 
choice, right? Then you have a choice what you focus on. If, if both possibilities exist. And so what matters is what you focus on, but reaffirming it for yourself. You can feel when it's like, Ooh, I need your compliment or tell me, give me your compliment. You felt that from people, right? In, in your life. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I yeah. like, Oh yeah. Compliment, compliment. Or look at me. I got, I have it all together or, you know, people like that. We see them all over. And, and oftentimes I think those people, I, I often will feel less inclined to compliment almost like I have to obligated. Right. But with people who have that inner knowing, like knowing who they are, knowing that that they are that they get to choose they get to choose what's true about them and they can improve and grow in any area anyone can change anyone it's a choice yeah. and and when you start focusing on that and believing that it comes from this inner place that is irreplaceable it's a depth of confidence that nothing else no person's uh and no person's compliments or no amount of accolades can ever do for you. It's your responsibility to reaffirm, to know who you are, know your values, your gifts, what, how you, how you show up in the world. It's your, it's your responsibility. And when you know that you show up differently and it feels different, compliments are different. Right, I love that. Yeah, um, it's it's very it's it's a line of what I'm I'm doing in my in my business is, is that I although I'm helping business women and and female leaders, um, I'm helping them with their confidence. But it's all about when it comes to showing up for your for yourself for your business, right? When it comes to putting yourself out there, yeah. and a lot of people they are struggling with their confidence. They yeah. feel like, ah, you know, what if people say this about me? What if my my friends and family, you know, yeah. criticize me, you know, things like that. And yeah. that's crazy. It all comes down to the core belief that you said, you know, I'm not good enough. When they are putting themselves out there, what if my hair is not enough, my makeup is not perfect, my clothes, you know, and my background. It's always about that. Yeah. It's crazy, right? I so know. it shows up in all areas of our life. It does. And yeah. and if people, this is the most beautiful thing about our world is if people show up and and let's say they're criticizing different parts of us, if it hurts, if we're taking it personally, that just means we have some inner work to do. That's a place inside of you that's calling for your love and attention. Those wounds, those I'm not enough or or I'm not lovable or whatever it is that 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 women feel that the human race feels it it brings us present and, and teaches us about ourselves. I like to see those inner parts of ourselves, the not enoughness as children. They're like little children that need some attention and love from us. No one else can do it for us. No one, no one can give Dana the love that Dana needs, the love that, that I need, the attention that I need, the, the reaffirming that I'm enough you know, often I'll take, because not enoughness is something that I, I definitely have struggled with in my life. Absolutely. Yeah. It pops yeah. up all the time. As a recovering perfectionist and recovering people pleaser, it pops up all the time. <laughs> and so those are the moments I just have to take a deep breath. And, and placing your hand on your heart actually engages your parasympathetic nervous system, which calms the body and teaches your brain to calm. And so often I'll place my hand on my heart and I'll just take a deep breath and, and I'll reaffirm to myself, it's okay. It's okay, Dana. You're scared right now. You're, you're being vulnerable. You're putting out a whole new program. You're, you're putting yourself out there. That absolutely is valid that you'd be scared in this moment and it's okay. Keep moving. You got this. I got you. If people are mean, it's okay. I've got you. I believe in you. I have me. And reaffirming that over and over. I remember when I used to do public speaking and I get on stage, I found myself in a habit when I get off stage of beating myself up. Like, oh, I should have done this better. And I wish I would have done this and this. And it's like, no, 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 no. I made a rule for myself. One improvement and focus on what I loved. The moments that I loved. 
that I just right. felt in the flow and I felt so good. And then one improvement to get better next time. And that worked so well for me. So well, just to be like, I, I'm going to stop it at one improvement. <laughs> and mm. then just focus in on that was a wonderful experience. And of course I can get better every time. But that was fun. And I rocked that stage, you know, that felt better. And I wasn't as scared to make mistakes because I knew I wasn't going to punish myself when I got off the stage. You know, same thing in our relationships, self-forgiveness and focusing on how you can improve that that is vital in our relationships and saying, oh, yeah, I made a mistake there. I can improve and forgiving yourself and asking for forgiveness is vital. It's vital to the okay. repair of a relationship. It's, it's the same on stage as it was in my life, right? In our relationships. Yeah. Okay. How do we know that it's, it's a mistake that we made in our relationship? Let's focus just on that. How do we know that it's our fault, quote unquote, or it's not our fault and that we mm-hmm. are being punished? Um, you know, um, being manipulated. Yeah. yeah. That's such a good question. And I go back to, because in my past, my history was when, when someone, a friend or my husband would come to me and say, hey, I don't like this and this is what yeah. you did. And I would usually just break down and cry and be like, I need to fix it all. I, I'll yeah. fix it, right? I was yeah. such a fixer. And, and I grew up seeing that in my mother and that's just what I knew. And, and I learned that I was taking on all the accountability. I was over accountable and, mm. and that's actually really unhealthy. It's unhealthy and it, it actually uh, creates, it can create manipulation. It can create uh, circumstances where you enable the person that you're with because you're like, I'll, I'll fix it. I, I'll change it all. Right. Yeah. On the opposite end, you have a blame where you're like, it's all your fault and you need to change everything. And it's you, it's yeah. you, it's you. Right. Yeah. And, and depending yeah. on the circumstances, we can be both, we can do both in our life, <laughs> but the question, and this is the, the power question that I ask myself in moments is what's my part mm. what is my part. How did I contribute to that moment? Okay. And how can I be more aware and, and I'm responsible for my part and my part alone. I will not take responsibility for the other person's part. So how I showed up, the emotions I brought to the table, the words I said, the things that I did that created that moment. Those are the things that I start thinking about if someone comes to me now and says, hey, I didn't like this or this is how you showed up or, you know. Sometimes their story is different than mine and that can happen too. And in those moments when their story is different than mine, like sometimes, you know, I had a friend once come to me probably a year after something had happened that she's been stewing in and I had no clue. And she came to me and, and her story at the time was very different than mine. So all I could do in that moment was say, I'm so sorry for your experience. That was not my intention. I wasn't intending to hurt you. It wasn't, that wasn't my purpose. That was my intention in showing up that way. I, 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 I was doing that to the best of my ability. So how do you want to move forward? Because I see it differently. I didn't, I didn't see that it happened that way but I can see that it really hurt you and that that's how you saw it. So how can we move forward? What can I do to mend this so we can move forward and have win wins. And so when someone starts brainstorming how they want me to show up, then I really think, does that work for me? Do I really want that? Is that healthy? All of those questions go through my mind. And if it's not, then I try to find win-win. Okay, what about this? Or what are your thoughts about this? What if we did it this way? Like, let's let's find some win-wins mm. of how we both can feel good moving forward. We both can feel like, yeah, that's doable. That makes sense. Let's let's move forward with that. 
Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? Totally. Yeah, and I can so relate to this. And the reason why I ask is because many, many years ago, I was in a toxic relationship, and you know, it's all about. And I was, I was too young back. I didn't know. I didn't know any better. I didn't know anything about. I didn't even started doing my self development, um, personal development work. Nothing. So I was in this toxic relationship. I was just like crying every single day. You know, and yeah. every time we had a conflict, it's always my fault. It's always yeah. me. It's you. Yeah. I didn't even know what I did wrong, but I, I, I took no. it, right? I took it in. I was like, right. okay, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Then I cried right. and I begged him, you know, don't leave. Oh, yeah. It was like me. And um, so now, of course, I know better. And now looking back, it was a toxic relationship, right? Yeah. Um, everything happened for a reason. It was a, something that I had to go through in order to learn my lesson. Um, yeah. So now I know that's not what, I want right and then I can yeah. start attracting a healthier relationship which yeah. we will talk about later it's all about the future what do you want now um so interestingly you also talk about conflicts a lot in relationship and you talk about it's, it's powerful right the power yeah. of conflicts and talk to us about that because why do you why do you say it's powerful? Because it's very unusual when, you know, people think, you know, how people see conflicts, they think it's bad, it's negative, you know, shouldn't have conflict in relationship. What is your, what is your take on that? I absolutely am a, I'm a huge advocate that conflict can actually deepen your relationship. Mm. Conflict, conflict dealt with in healthy ways yeah. and deepen trust, deepen your relationship it can be profoundly, um, it's almost like, let me give you an example. I was driving, I was, I was, uh, cycling. I love going and biking. I'm biking on this trail and in, in Utah right now, there's floods everywhere. Mm. It is just flooding like crazy. And there was this whole farmland that was flooded. And there was this really big tree that had fallen in the path. And as I looked at it, it's, it's roots actually were not deep. They weren't deep roots, but it was a big tree. And, and it reminded me so much of this idea of conflict of like that tree couldn't be sustained, couldn't be held because the roots didn't go deep enough. When we have conflict, it actually deepens our roots. If we handle conflict, I believe with emotional intelligence with that. Okay. What's my part? What's your part? And and sometimes you have to do this separately, right? If it's very heated. Sometimes you have to go write it out. I highly recommend that. But taking a time out and going out and saying, okay, what's my part? What am I responsible for in this? And then what's my part? And then what do I want moving forward? And win-win negotiation, right? And sometimes it's not just going to be one way, like you have your ideas, you have to come to the table with a willingness to negotiate and be flexible. And so in those moments, what happens, and I've seen this in, in my current relationship, you know, that every time, like we, we fight, we have conflict. Absolutely. But every time we do and we navigate it, and, and we come to this win-win place, which there's always a win-win. I believe that always. And you got to be flexible. And sometimes you have to come back and brainstorm again and again. If it gets heated again, you got to, you got to take a break, come back. Cause you, you can't find solutions in the same energy that the conflict was created. You have to be in a different energy, yeah, in a different mindset, right? In a different place an openness. If you're still in that place of conflict and, and that, you know, that feeling yeah. of like, Ugh! yeah, no, that's not the time to find solutions. It's time to take a break, take some breaths. And this is, this is a simple idea, but hard to practice, right? Hard to practice, but coming back, finding, committing to the win-win and being flexible and finding that I really believe there's there's always that win win that can happen. What and if, so, what if yeah. you're trying to solve the conflict, but the other person is just not willing to do it? Like he or she might shut down, or you know, just yeah. don't want to talk, give you a silent treatment. But you are yeah. here, calm, clear. You want to you want to deal with this, but the other person is not ready. What do you do in that moment? That's when you have to wait. You have to wait. 
because if you try to force it, yeah. it's not going to end up a win-win. It's going to be a win-lose or a lose-win, or which is a lose. It's a lose for everyone, right? Yeah. And so I, I grew up in a family where I love, like, we got to talk it out and let's find solutions right now. Let's figure it out. And I want to figure it out. And my partner, Jeremy, he, he didn't grow up that way. He grew up very different and, mm-hmm. and he gets silent and he, he needs a break. Yeah. And it takes him a little bit longer because he wants to process it and think about it. And he, he just, he processes differently than me. So I had to remind myself And sometimes it's deeply uncomfortable. I want to validate anyone who likes to talk about it right then. It is deeply uncomfortable. Mm. And it really calls forth you trusting that that person, and I get to reaffirm this myself, I trust Jeremy that he will process through this and that we will find solutions. I trust him. And I tell him, I'll I'll tell him that. Absolutely. Like, hey, I trust you. I trust you that you'll you'll process through that. And when you're ready, let's come back. I'll ask you again tomorrow. Hey, do you think you're ready? Do you think you're ready to talk that out and find some solutions? Is there anything I can do? And, you know, I really make sure in those moments, too, because because it's important to reaffirm to him that uh, he's still loved in the process. And so I'll reaffirm, you know, I'll give him, if he wants, I'll give him a hug or I'll scratch his back. And I'm telling you, that's really vulnerable for me to scratch his back or to hug him or to, to offer that when we haven't figured it out. And he's still kind of mad. Yeah. Really vulnerable. It's actually scary. (laughs) And, And I just keep telling myself it's brave. It's brave to show him love when he's, when he's in that place. It's brave, Dana. And it's okay. Like, I love you. And if he needs some space, I can give him some space. He has permission to speak up. And for me, I I have to go for myself. If he needs that, I have to reaffirm it's okay. Because it gets scary sometimes for me. Because I want to talk it out. And I have a different style. And so I have to just say, you know what? It's okay. I trust him. I trust Mm -hmm. him. We'll figure it out. Thanks, beautiful. (laughs) So you talk about because you know, you know, you grew up this way and uh, whereas he grew up in a certain way, you know, and so is it important for us to first find out or discover our partner's story, you know, yeah. the childhood and how do we do that? Do we just ask them? Oh. Or do, yeah. You know, I don't There's, think that's what we do in relationship, right? When we first meet yeah. each other, we don't talk about our childhood. or our Right, story. Yeah. right. Yeah, one of the the most beautiful questions to ask, you know, I was I spent some time with my aunt and uncle last night and and I love this question that they brought up that they ask each other in conflict and I think it applies perfectly here is how was this handled in in your childhood? Like how did, how did, how was this kind of conflict resolved in your childhood? Mm. You know, or how did how did your parents do this this way? You know, like Or what did you see growing up that was like this? Those are always questions you can ask to give you insight on how they handle conflict and why, you know, like, Hey, when there was conflict in your home, how was it handled? I'm, I'm just fascinated and curious. And, and there's no, this is the thing to remember too. There's no right or wrong. Like everyone deserves to take their time the way that they need it. And this is where that self-awareness is vital. Awareness of what you need and your timing. And you got to communicate with your partner on that. You got to communicate with who you're, you're with and learn to have that conversation of, you know what? I need, I need like 24 hours, I think. Can we check back in in 24 hours? Like, absolutely, yes. I will give you that time. And understanding like, oh, yeah that that's where that comes from like childhood it's not personal it's not that he doesn't love me it's not that he's he's uh you know just just totally blowing me off no no no. he's aware he just needs more time and so so i think uh going back to that question you know being curious and asking like hey what was this like growing up or what's what's one of your favorite experiences growing up or how is this handled in your family growing up it gives you so much insight to the person 
and it helps them to mm. understand why they do what they do, which is profound. And, and it is, it's a big part of the, the program that Jeremy and I are doing is understanding how you handle conflict, how, how you like to go about it, what your values are, what you bring to the table. It's a rediscovery of you. Because when you become self-aware, you're empowered then to communicate in healthy ways the way that you want to manage and handle conflict. And it's, it's vital. It's really vital in a relationship to have self-awareness to know how to communicate. Otherwise, your boundaries will get crossed again and again and again. And you'll just be mad and you won't know why. And that can happen often, right? You're just mad and you don't even yeah. know why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all true. Yeah. Okay, so how do you know when, you know, let's say if you're in a relationship and they just like, just like, you know, always conflict, always argument, you know, um, and um, just almost like every day. Um, how do you know that the relationship is actually right for you versus right. is worth trying? There's there are work to do versus do I really want to do this? Is it worth my time? How do we know that? Oh, such <laughs> a good question. And I think it, it's a complex question yeah. and one that, that is so personal. And yeah. so it, it is such a personal journey, but I think that there's key things that you can look at because this, this actually was a, a really profound question that, that led me to my divorce actually, because when, when I got divorced, I didn't want to make a really rash decision, like quick decision out of anger or hurt or pain. Mm -hmm. So I spent two to three years working on myself, working on my triggers from that relationship, the things that hurt me most, the things that bothered me most, um, all the things about the relationship that I, I could be aware of. And I started to unpack those and work through those you know, lots of tears, lots of, of, of navigating that. But as I released that old stuff, then I started to look at, okay, what do I value? What do I want my future to look like? What, what are the, the goals that I have? And, and what are the things that I really want in a partner? And I encourage this for everyone. It, it, even if you're in a relationship or not, outside of everyone else, what do you want? You know, we're always evolving and growing. And so asking those questions, what is it that I value? What do I want in my future? And what do I want in a partner? And start looking at those. Those things really help you start to see and, and really coming to the table and, and ask your partner the same thing. What do you want in the future? What does that look like for you? What do you value? You know, and what is it that you want in a partner? Because when you can independently become aware, then it's easier to see if you match up, if you match up or not. Because often what's fascinating, and I, I don't know about other places, but here in Utah, people get married pretty fast, within usually three months. Like they'll meet and get married. Really? It's fast. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's part of the the religious culture that's here, and and to me, it it's part of what creates. Uh, at that point, three months in, you're you're still functioning off of uh, off of the those connections that are just they're just fun and they feel good and you're in love and yeah, the chemistry, those, right those of, yeah attraction. it's chemistry right and it's not necessarily compatibility yeah and so that's why that's why the knowing your values and knowing what you want in your future and and what you want life to look like and what you want in a partner is so important to, to really look at not just chemistry, like chemistry is not going to last you a lifetime, right? It only lasts so long. <laughs> and then things happen and life happens and that changes. But knowing your compatibility, do your values and not everything has to line up perfectly, mm. but you know what their values are and their goals are, and you know, you know who they are and what they want. Then you can start to see, are we compatible? Are we compatible? 
for for where we're headed are we are is that a goal are those goals that i can support and he can support me you know are those things that that we can support and do together is his list and my list are are we those things or can we work towards those things you know is that something that i want you know and so then you can start seeing more clearly if you're in alignment and then when you have those things like that, it's, it's so beautiful because me and Jeremy, we have so many of those things that are in alignment that, that conflict now becomes, okay, we will work through this. We got this because we're compatible in so many areas and, and we're not perfect in every area. We don't match in everything, but that's okay. Mm. It's good to be different in some areas. It's really good. But when you can start looking at that, then the conflict then becomes more, uh, to me, it, you just, it's a matter of learning tools after that to manage conflict. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and everyone's going to have a different variety of fighting, different uh, frequency of fighting. And so it just, there's no real standard of like, if you only fight twice a week, you're good. Or, you know, there's not really a standard. It's just start looking at those, those core things. Are you compatible? Is this a yes for you and your soul? Great. If you are, then let's learn some tools to work through conflict better. If that's part of the struggle, but now, you know, you're compatible. Mm, Yeah. It's not about the number of conflicts, it's about how you're dealing with it, right? Yes. What do you do? How do you show up when it happens? Yeah. It's not about how many yeah. times it happens, but it's how do you show up for it? Yep. Uh-huh. So I want to go back to what you said in the very beginning about facts and emotion, right? When you talk about all this, you know, like list of things that our goals, our vision, our value, I could categorize it as facts right? Facts check. Mm-hmm. You know, you, your yeah. goal is this, your value is this, you know, this is your vision, this is what you want. What if, on the emotional side, I'm so in love with this person, yeah. right? I don't see it anymore. It, it doesn't matter if we are not aligned, we doesn't match, you know, but I'm so in love with him. I don't want to, you know, I want, I want to see a future with him. I know we are mm-hmm. not compatible, but I, I love him, right? So how do you then deal with the emotional part of yourself and really look at the facts and, and you know, like, and just like make a decision, I know it's a that's, personal question again, but yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great question. And and I think for me, you know, I can only share my experience. Yeah. For me, you know, when I got divorced, I had my list mm-hmm. of knowing what I know about me. And I was very self-aware. I am very self-aware still. And I practice regularly. But I was very self-aware of who I am, what I value, what's important to me. And so having that list and I had, you know, I had my extensive list, but I had like three to five non-negotiables. Like if they don't have these things, it's a no for me because these things are really important for a healthy long-term relationship. You know, these things are the things that I, that are core, that I really believe in that, that are vital. So three to five, and then the rest are negotiable, right? So that really helped me, um, because I'm, I am, I have a huge heart. I can love anyone I meet. I am so that way. I can love anyone I meet and see the potential. And so if I have my list, it helped me really stay grounded in this is my standard, but I can love, like I can enjoy anyone. But the thing that, that helps, I think, and in, in where I would coach somebody here is saying, okay, you feel that love. Great. I would say, give it, give it just over a year and see if that's still there because they say about a year is when everyone starts showing their true colors and you start seeing how you're really feeling about it. Give it a year, you know, don't make any big decisions that first year, see that person, in lots of different seasons of life, see them under stress, see them in success, you know, just see them, observe them, see if it's something that you want and, and observe, like, have a good way of looking at it, right? Observe in a healthy way, if you if you can. And if you can have friends that can help you, even better. That will kind of help bring balance, right? Mm. I have a few core friends that I had on a list of, like, these are my people that will tell me the truth. They will tell me honestly about the person I'm dating. 
and and they were kind of my 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 check buddies you know like hey what do you think tell me honestly because mm. sometimes when we fall in love when we feel that chemistry it's so hard to think clearly yeah. right yeah yeah so give it a year or over a year see them in lots of different seasons and i would say um there's one more thing have your list yeah. And, and I think that that's what I'd say. And only you, you can know. And, and to me, a good coach is somebody that doesn't uh, tell someone what to do with their life. They empower them to know within themselves. Because sometimes, sometimes Joanne, Joanne, I really believe that when people fall in love and they decide to get married quickly and they step in and, and it's just this whirlwind, Sometimes that is one of the best experiences. Really? Wow. Sometimes, yeah, because you learn what you don't want. It's like failing fast in business. Okay. Like, like your relationship. You learned quickly, like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> and, and standing up in that and saying, ooh, that, that, that doesn't work for me. You know, I am not here to tell anybody if that, that that's wrong for them. You know, I can give caution and I can, especially if we're going to go extreme with like abuse and things like that. I, of course I will, I will give caution and things like that. But if it's just a relationship where they're like, I don't think we're totally compatible, but I'm so in love and I'm going to step in. I'm like, check in. And if that feels right, I support you because your soul knows what you came to learn here. Your soul knows better than me. And some people that, that failing fast is really valuable. If they can stand back up and say, Ooh, now I know really clearly what I don't want. <laughs> I never thought about that in relationship. So that really yeah. opens up my mind because, uh, you know, when you talk about business, you, have, you all know that, right? People talk about it all the time. But when you talk about relationship, I always thought, you know, if you fail in a relationship, right? If a relationship comes to an end, then it's like the end of the world, right? It's so hard yeah. to wake up again and love again, right? And I just yeah. don't see it that way. So thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. And when you talk about, you know, talking to your friends, you know, help, you know, it's, it's important to have friends who can help you see, see the truth. I just want to say that you have to be mindful who you seek advice from, right? Some friends, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> they'll just tell you, it's not right for you. You need some better, you know, and come and have a drink with me. Let's go party. You know, there's right. a lot of friends that will be. Right. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Be very selective. I, I have, I have really good friends for me that are they will tell me honestly, and they know me so well that they know, like they know what's good for me and I trust them and, yeah. and they're not, they don't, they don't feed into, they're not really judgmental. Does that make sense? They're, they're not judging everyone. They're not judgmental people. They just will tell me honestly, like, Hey, look at this, or here's a possibility of something to look at, you know, and they're a good judge of character. So yeah yeah and you have to look at you know what is their relationship like yes right yes. it's like when you want to seek business advice from people you want to look at whether they are successful in their business or not right whether yes. they are entrepreneur they are business owners if not yeah. you know it will work right if you seek advice from people yeah. who are having a nine-to-five job they won't give you the best business advice so yes. so i would say yeah. if you are really struggling with relationship you know just Go to Diana, right? She's the best. Right. Right? She, yes. oh, yeah. Oh, I will help you see the whole relationship in a whole new way, especially through divorce. We judge ourselves so harshly, harshly through breakups, big breakups and divorce. And we can carry all that baggage into the next relationship. And so the whole point of Life Reimagined, this program is to help people see the value of what they learned in that relationship all the things that it taught them and oftentimes what they don't want is so valuable mm -hmm. you learn who you are and the things that are important to you you know you learn about yourself you learn through contrast and taking those and being like wow that wasn't a failure that was like a huge learning lesson of understanding of me myself and what i want that that was valuable 
And that's my goal is to help people see every relationship, every relationship is valuable. Everyone teaches you things. It just is a matter of if you're asking the right questions to get you there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking your time out to be here with us today. And we always end with our final five rapid fire questions. And every question has to be answered in one word or one sentence maximum. And I have changed the questions. So normally I will ask all the guests the same question. But for you, I have different set of questions just to fit into our team today about love and relationships. So are you ready? Yes. Yes. I love this. Okay. So the first question is, what is the best relationship advice that you have ever received? Hmm. Hmm. I think the most transformational is conflict deepens relationship and trust when dealt with in healthy ways. Yeah. Who gave you that, that piece of advice, if I may ask? Yeah, it was my aunt and uncle. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The next question is, what is the worst relationship advice that you have ever received? <laughs> worst relationship advice was probably when I when I first got married the what I was taught growing up is there were just these three things marry somebody who's a good provider uh return missionary from my my religion that I used to be part of and um loves God that's it that's all that matters (laughs) okay I think it was the worst advice (laughs) right Um, yeah yeah it's not that those things don't matter sometimes they will but it's, it's not the only thing that matters. Yeah. It's not the only thing we should be looking for in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. The next question is, what is something you wish you knew earlier? Oh, something I wish I knew earlier. That, oh, that it is profoundly beautiful to make mistakes. That there's, that it is the best way to learn in this life. Mm-hmm. Fail fast, make mistakes. Every successful person I've ever met, that is, that's what they've done. And I think that's one of the best ones, that mistakes are necessary part of being human. Love it. Beautiful. The next question is, if you can, if you can live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Hmm. Hmm. I think that the one thing that I would change is way more self-compassion. Self-compassion through all of my humanness. I wish I would have learned that as a child and brought self-compassion through all of my life, all of the things that I, all the choices, um, because my perfectionism was so, it was just really, I was really hard on myself, very hard. And still have moments, but I I choose now to bring self-compassion. That's beautiful. The last question is, what brings you joy? Oh, brings me joy. People, transformation. When someone opens their heart and shares their deepest fears and their wounds or things that that have just their life experiences that have profoundly, deeply uh, affected them. And I, I can bring this light, like, wow, what did you learn? What an experience. It just, that transformation of helping people see those hard things in a different way. It is the most soul fulfilling experience for me. It feels as if, as if I'm living my soul's purpose when I'm in that with somebody and when, when I can support people in that way. So people and transformation bring my heart so much joy yeah i can tell now tell my listeners where they can find you and connect with you and join your program if they want to if they are ready yes yes um you can find us at innerworldmovement.com and you can find all the information on there you can apply we actually are taking applications right now anyone who applies in the next two weeks will uh, be entered in to win a free spot through our program. Wow. So it's an incredible opportunity and we're so excited for this launch, for this program. So go on there and um, you can you can uh, look around on our website and apply on there. That is generous. Thank you so much for offering that 
to my listeners, um, and is it for everyone or is it for people who are specifically going through a divorce or they are single looking for a relationship or they are already in a relationship but they're having some conflicts? Who do you work with? Yeah, so we work with people who've been through divorce and still feel that that baggage that they're carrying, that they haven't been able to really process through that or work through that. And sometimes that's people who are in the, maybe their second relationship or they're moving moving through that. Um, you definitely, we, we take people uh, through that. And But people who've experienced divorce and want to move forward, uh, whether they're in a relationship or not right now. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Is there anything else that you want to share before we let you go? I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Joanne, for what you're doing. Thank you for, for this opportunity. I appreciate what you're doing to add value into this world and to add joy and to everything that you're doing to help women in business. Thank you so much. I really value that and really appreciate uh, having other people like you in this world that are moving forward and trying to help inspire and, and help other people. And anyone listening, reach out. I would love to connect and talk with you. I'd love to hear more. Um, I'm happy to, to meet with you live in person, whatever that looks like. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your joy and your love with all us today. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I know you love this episode. Remember, if you are listen to, listening to this, you know, or you're watching this, just take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and take me and take Dana, take everyone, take your friends, take, you know, take your neighbors, <laughs> your auntie, your uncles. And remember to hit that subscribe button so they won't miss another episode coming every Wednesday. And I'll always leave you the same way as I live with every other episode. Show up. The world needs you and you need you. Thanks for listening and I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead. Thanks again to our sponsor, Get the Law of Attraction. Follow them on Instagram for daily spiritual enrichment and encouragement, especially if your spiritual ice cream cone is melting a bit, you will get a fresh scoop of your favorite flavor of spiritual encouragement and insights. Find your with Joanne listeners will get $25 off when you go to their website and use promo code Joanne, J-O-Y-A-N, when you sign up for their Law of Attraction course and gratitude journal. Once again, that is Joyan J-O-Y-A-N, for $25 off, and their links are in the show notes below.